In this example, we're asked to show that at least 10 days of any 64 days chosen must fall on the same day of the week. So for this one, what we can do is we can try to think about how we would um, place these days in such a way to try to minimize the, the number of days that fall on the same day of the week. It doesn't matter which day of the week this happens to be, but we want these to happen on the same day of the week. So let's start by just listing off the days of the week. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And think of these this list here like these are little bins where we're going to pick days of the week. We're going to pick uh, any 10 days out of 64. So out of these 64 days, um, it doesn't matter which day we start on, but those days are going to go in order, right? So for a 64-day stretch, or even if you choose these 64 days randomly, I, I guess that's the idea here, right? So choose, it says 64 days chosen. So we're going to choose these days randomly. And as we do so, we can just start putting you know, tick marks or something, just somehow we mark off the days of the week that we've chosen. And as we do this, there are seven choices for days of the week, right? And so if we try to do this in such a way that we want to minimize the, the day, the number of times that any certain day is chosen, then let's say we choose Monday, and then there's a Wednesday, Tuesday, and so any random order that you want to do this, we just make sure that we don't double up, right? And so eventually what's going to happen is that we are going to have, if we do this in some systematic way, we're going to have seven days of the week on Monday. Oh, sorry. We're going to have nine days of the week on Monday at some point. Nine, nine. So there's going to be nine days of the nine, nine selections for each day of the week here. And this, of course, nine times seven equals 63 chosen days. All right. So at this point, we've chosen, you know, this is a hypothetical exercise, but we've chosen 63 days and we've got it evenly distributed so that every day of the week has nine has been chosen nine times, right? But there's one more day that we need to choose. So there's one more day. And so this one more day has to show up somewhere, right? So no matter where we pick this, there's nowhere to put it so that we can not make sure that that um, we don't get a tenth day for one of these days of the week. So no matter where we put it, let's say we put it on Wednesday, now we're up to 10, right? Now, if you put it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, etc., then you have the same same result here. So there's got to be at least one of these days will have to be chosen at least 10 times. All right, now, if you don't do this in such a systematic way, it's possible that you could choose Monday 64 times and not choose any other days of the week, right? So depending on how you choose these days. Again, it doesn't tell us how to choose the days. It's also possible that we could have, you know, 10, 10, 10. So six of the days could be 10, and then you could just choose the last day four times. So it doesn't say that, that this is the only way to do it, but it says that no matter how we do it, there must be at least one day of the week that has at least 10 days, right? chosen or it has been chosen 10 times however you want to word that now this example is a specific example of something called the pigeonhole principle so this is a principle in mathematics and you can just state this so principle I'm having trouble spelling here but the pigeonhole principle so the pigeonhole principle says that if you have uh, n let's say n plus 1 items to maybe call them pigeons since it's called the pigeonhole principle. So n plus one items to be placed in n bins, for example, then at least one bin must have two items, okay? So then at least one bin must have two items placed in it. All right, and so this is just a general pr principle. You can restate this with pigeons. So you have n plus one pigeons that are trying to fly into n holes, and then one of the holes must there, there must be one hole where two pigeons try to occupy it at the same time, and that's why it's called the pigeonhole principle. Um, but there are many different examples of this that you'll see throughout uh, your mathematical careers. So this is just one way to state it. Another way is if you're in a room with 13 people. You share, so you're in a classroom, let's say, with 13 people, then at least, there must be at least two people in the room that share the same birth month. 
Okay, so you have 13 people in a room. There are 12 months in the year, right? And so the pigeonhole principle says that at least two people share the same birth month. And so these are all examples of the pigeonhole principle. Now, we don't know what the birth month is. We don't know who the two people are. But you can be sure that if you polled everyone, then there would be one month that comes up twice, at least one month that happens at least twice. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee that there's a month where, uh, that there's not a month where no one was born, though, right? So just be careful. But this is the pigeonhole principle.